Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today we are doing Back in Time with Phil and Andy RC but this just looks like a shark flyer but what have we got over here? This looks like the Digifleet or Dodgifleet controller that I showed on the channel a couple of weeks ago. So Phil, what on earth is going on here? Uh, mate, we've got the best of both worlds tonight. We've got one of my regular trusty shark flyers. Uh, with a nice little, this is the old cast of the micro bike camera, okay? So we know these things work fantastic. But if we flip this sucker around, we've got this thing with this ugly looking tail. It goes all the way from here, all the way down ugly to there. Ugly looking tail? Yeah. You mean this bit like a string that just That's never it, bit ends? Of, bit, bit of string, yeah, bit of black string, yeah. yeah. This is a Jetty micro four channel, 35 meg receiver on channel 61. So back in the day, which was roughly 18 years ago for this thing, this was beautiful to have on a shock. It was small, micro, did the job. So the idea is tonight to try and 3D modern shocky uh, with that wreck of a radio, which I'll explain in a moment. <laughs> so that camera's facing the wrong way though. What's all that about? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not looking at it, right, sunshine? By the time you get that in the air, that's looking right back at you whilst you're looking at it. No, we don't want it to look at us though, right? <laughs> no, I want to see your thumbs blur on them sticks, mate. You're going to have to work tonight, man. Okay, cool. So this is the controller, but it wasn't working when we did the video last time. So what did you have to do to restore it? Well, I stopped using it as a doorstop to start with. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Good start. Um, I, I did an awful lot. I had to do a proper MOT and service on this thing. So now, when you turn on the massive switch at the top, the, the little red thingy goes Look all the way that. into the green thingy. It doesn't go all the way, just well, like my one. No, no. <laughs> no, no. These were rigged for like dry cells, pretty much. So by the time mm -hmm. you put rechargeables in, you're down 0.3 of a volt on each cell. Okay. But as long as you're in the green, you're good to go. So we'll save the juice, because I haven't got a charge. I have to charge all the batteries. <laughs> a separate four cell receiver packs first, before right. building the pack. This is the second pack. I melted the first pack late last night, because uh, I was very tired at one in the morning. Um, so anyway, we'll turn it round and again back off with the old twisty thing like that. Okay, so after the MOT, what failed? Lots of things failed. Um, the antenna, which seemed to be reasonably secure last week, there's a securing screw down here, which not only secures the antenna, but there's a wire coming off the board. So this is from your, your RF signal. All this was loose and wobbling around, so that was not going to work. So screw that in nice and tight. Um, these, this is the second lot of batches I put in here. My fault, I fried the whole, it, it took five minutes to cook itself this lot because I, I, I messed up with the insulation on one of the cells, so you've got masking tape all over the place. But it's all secured now, proper job. Um, but this is the worst thing, showing the slack last week on the uh, sticks. There is a point at the top here where we have a metal pin. Uh, which is the pivot, which you can maybe just about see down there. Yeah. Okay, well this plastic frame here has a hole in it, and that hole is so worn, you've got about one and a half mil each way on both sticks. Right. So when you're flying precision stuff, you've got to take up all that slack first. Um, but also, uh, when you flew back in the day with the old clunk clunk ratchet system, uh, to give you half a chance tonight flying 3D, I undo undid this screw just a little bit, uh, so it's nice and smooth. Um, but if, if I take it off completely, it's just going to drop out and roll around the set. So it needs to be just about where it is. That's okay. Um, last week, you're pointing at these things here saying, what are these? Yes. Phil? And I'm like, don't touch them, man. You'll, you'll blow it up. Um, I couldn't find a manual anyway. I looked on the internet. I looked through all the dusty rubbish I have at home. Oh, well, I, I, ha I have a theory. Are they an adjustment for the trims? because there are as many of them as there are controls, right? You're on the right track. So you've got four main channels. You've got your two sticks here and two sticks here. So that's four channels. Um, these are what you might call now your, your server reverses and your adjustable travel volume, your servo movement. right. But this is so old school. So you take a flat screwdriver, you have to figure out which dial is which channel. Um, so let's say from going from 12 o'clock down to 9 a.m., that is the servo goes this way, that way, okay? And if it's at full nine o'clock position, that's full movement available. As you come up to the 12 o'clock position, you're losing servo uh, volume, servo travel, okay? Yeah. Um, and then when you go past the 12 o'clock position, now you're changing the servo direction to the other direction. So that's your servo reverse. And then going right away over to three o'clock, that's full movement in that other direction. That's ah, for all four main channels. You know, last week you called it Dodgy Fleet. And then I got a load of comments saying, 
I had one of these things and they were great. And do you know what? Something that I didn't mention is that mine actually never broke. I only upgraded it so that I could do buddy box. So, yeah, you were a bit harsh on Fleet, but I guess maybe they were a little My bit My experience hit was completely different. The old school guys that taught me were, were like proper British flies. If, if you can get English radio, buy it, use it. But I swear to God, the guys were telling me sticks were falling out. Other things were failing, RF discriminators just packing in, so you're flying on all channels, you know, kill, shooting everybody down. Yeah. Um, I, I'd never buy one and fly one, but when you turned up to the field, it's like, well, good luck, kid. Right, so old BMFA rules. So switch on, meter in the green, aerial secure and very fully extended, rates in correct position and trims in correct position. And also need to put my peg on the pegboard so let's see if I can fly with this thing and not hit the aerial. Oh my God. <laughs> How did I fly with this thing? There's like a blind spot, like the Gobi Desert. Oh my goodness. Oh, don't hit anyone. <laughs> you literally put in a control and nothing happens. I'm actually shaking because it is that scary. Ah. Uh. Trying to have some kind of control. Oh my goodness. I never did 3D with this transmitter, so. There is such a delay in the controls as well. <laughs> Do you know what? I think it's actually easier to hover than it is to fly around. Not sure I want to get it any closer to us, really, if I'm honest. You won't be able to have the antenna's in the way. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. The antenna's taken up half of the room, so I'm having to sort of keep it... Oh, watch the wall. How on earth did any of the instructors not crash any of my planes? We were when brilliant, they were... Andy. <laughs> you were brilliant. The aerial's almost touching the thing. I know, it's a terrifying feel, isn't it? Also, could I get a glitch if it did accidentally touch? Is that no, man, it's fun, you'll be fine. That's something that I never realised when we used to fly 35 megahertz. The first time that I flew 35 megahertz on a shock flyer and it was on a really calm day, I couldn't believe how much interference I was getting. Yeah, some of the early uh, um, micro 35 meg receivers were not the best. If it was a, a very small one running on a half size crystal, you could pick up all kinds of uh, interference. Ah, oh, there is such a dead zone. I know, yeah. It's like flying a brick that's drunk. Do you know what? This transmitter makes those cheap Ishin toy transmitters look revolutionary. I know, <laughs> fantastic, right? Oh my goodness. It's, that's hard work, isn't uh, it? <laughs> very hard work. I feel, it feels so out of control. We are so spoiled today, everybody. Okay, let's see if I can get close to it without killing myself. Oh, gosh. I can't really get any closer because the aerial whacks it. Usually I'm pretty good at talking while flying, but no. Anyways, that was actually the battery. That was full throttle. Oh my gosh. Actual nervous wreck. Now I know I shake, but I don't shake this much. Wow, how on earth can I fly? Crazy. Anyways, there you go. This is the 1985 
transmitter that I learned to fly on in 2020 and yeah I think I might go back to the modern day transmitters because that was it was a little bit fun but also as you could see a little bit scary so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers